This weekend, the final episode of Barry debuted. So today we're gonna stop and rank all four seasons of Barry from the least best to the best. Hi, my name is Sean, and I love to talk about movies and TV way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comment section. Share your ranking of all four seasons of Barry. My list is not the right list. It's just my list, and I would love to see yours. As I go into this, it's going to contain spoilers for the entire run of the show Barry. So if you haven't watched Barry yet, go watch Barry, then come back and watch this video. Also, as I go into this, I think the whole run of the show was pretty good. There were some rough spots in a couple of the seasons, but otherwise, I mean, I think it's a solid, solid show. There's not like the point in time where it got awful or even when it went down some paths I wasn't crazy about, it found a way to kind of pull it back in a way that went, okay, yeah, I see what you were doing there. That, that worked well enough for me. With that said, let's get started. Number four is season four. And while there was quite a few moments or ideas or specific plot lines that I enjoyed in this season, and there were some really clever ideas and what they did in the finale, and I understand why they went on the path they did to so that we could have those final notes, those final moments in the finale of the series. I think that this was by far the most flawed season. And a big part of that is that I feel that this either needed to trim half of its plot lines or be two seasons. And given that there's a time jump in the middle of the season, you can even see quite easily how you take the first four episodes and make that a full season so you can properly flesh out all of those plot lines. And then you end with the time jump as the cliffhanger of the finale and then you make the entire, the last four episodes an entire additional season. But as is, it just felt like we were having to rush way through too many plot lines that were kind of going on here. And so we're like, oh, oh, that's, that's, that's the end of that. Okay. And then immediately we have to jump to this next thing, set it up really quickly, set up a conflict so they can resolve and we can get to the finale. And, um, because of all of that, I, I really wasn't crazy about the time jump. It made for like, especially when you had the first episode where you're just watching their boring, mundane life. It's like, ooh, um, I think this show might have just uh, jumped the shark right here. This could have been the thing that that completely kills the show. And then, it, it like it like I my interest in watching week to week was kind of like, I don't, man, I don't. I don't even know if I want to see where this is headed because I, I was not crazy about that. And then it kind of started to win me back as you start getting into the, those final episodes and the final resolution with what happens. There's some of it that I get what they're going for. And there's a certain emotional payoff with the final sequence with his son seeing this fictionalized version of the story that paints his dad as the tragic hero and Cuso as the real villain. There's something about that, that that's kind of nice. And then there's a side to it of what was our journey supposed to be for Barry? Like, was there really any redemption, any meaningful growth and change here? Or is this just a comforting lie? And is that what the show is? Is that the message of the show? The, comforting lies, the lives we choose to live and act out. Is that what it is? And there's not really redemption. I don't know if I like that. And then the idea of Kusanel ending up being the, the villain of the show. Uh, he was a character, that, the person that probably makes the most effort for the most of the show, trying to be a better version of himself, trying to make things right while still being flawed. He ends up being the person with the the worst sentence at the end, paying the worst for everything. And ultimately, end of the day, the reason that all that happens is because he wants to get revenge and decides to kill the person that killed the woman he loved and ruined his life in that moment of weakness, that act of vengeance has all these dire consequences. I don't... It's like one of those endings where you go, I, I, like a love-hate sort of one. There's a certain brilliance to it. There's a certain like, oh, that was kind of clever. Oh, you, you never give us the easy, 
easy solutions. You never, as soon as wherever I think it's going, it never quite goes there. There's a wit to it, but is it fully satisfying? Is it more frustrating? Does does it feel like it's thematically consistent? Does it feel like there's something there that was impactful of what we're communicating if that's where this leads? And you have a show that's set up on the idea of someone trying to get out of being a killer. And that's the person that never, they mildly at the very last moment might be trying to make the right choice. Barry, you're irredeemable. And we don't even get to see how it plays out. There's a frustration to that. So I, I have so many conflicting feelings on the last season, but I, in general, feel like they kind of put themselves into a weird corner by having Barry get arrested at the end of the last season while wanting to have him end up with Sally and do this time jump. So you have half the season where our characters are all scattered. Everyone's in a different place doing a totally different thing. And the dynamic that was so important to the beginning of the show is totally gone. And then when you start to pull them back together, it's years in the future. So it's just, I don't know, there's just a lot of odd things about the nature of this season that made it not feel quite right for me, not uh, deliver that which I want, what I enjoy from this show. In third place, season one, there's probably a pretty significant jump between four and one, and then the next three seasons are all, are all pretty close. Each of them has things about them that I that I really enjoy, but I think I'm confident in this placement of, of the, the rankings. But season one in third place, ten, typically I, I, I really enjoy first seasons of shows like this where there's just a really clever concept of, or just this odd pairing that you, you, huh, that's kind of odd. There's a hitman that's trying to stop being a hitman and pursues acting. I'm done, Fuchs. Starting now. That's a weird combination. Even for years, I had people tell me, you should check out Barry. It's a hitman that wants to become an actor. What are you talking about? And then you, when you watch it, it makes a lot more sense. And he finds this very interesting, dark, comedic tone with just this melancholy feel across all of it, with just these very sad characters in a comedy, but a very dark comedy at that. And so typically seasons like this, I, I enjoy these ones. I have them very high up on my rankings because I enjoy the first steps into that world and exploring the concept. There's so many fresh new opportunities when you first go dive into it. And this is actually one of those rare cases where the they hadn't quite found their stride yet. The, the concept was still there. There was still a lot of fun and interesting as you're watching all this play out. But in the case of this show, it got better and better as you started to meet these characters and they started to interact with each other. And as you learn their backstories and as their relationships to other people got more complex and more fleshed out, that's where this show really worked for me. And so that's where seasons two and three are at the top of my list, where it was in full stride, where our characters were interacting with each other a whole lot, but we knew them better. So like during season one, really didn't like Sally. She's very unpleasant in season one uh, because of the way that she's reacting to all this stuff. And it makes a lot more sense in the next season when you get her backstory and what she's doing. Why is she behaving like this very narcissistic, shallow fashion. Oh, she's kind of inventing a new version of herself to escape her. Oh, okay. Okay. Makes more sense. But at the time, very frustrating to kind of watch some of those interactions. So, and then I think they just figured out the characters a little bit better, wrote them a little bit better as we went along. And so all, all the pieces for what was coming, it's all there. It's solid. It's a nice introduction but they, they perfected it in the next two seasons. Our runner up season three, and this is where the show kind of really started to kind of mature. And you see a bunch of these plot lines fleshed out, but before it got to the point in time where I think it hurt the show a little bit. And so what I mean by that is that you have Sally's career is starting to take off, but some of the flaws that she has that were always there 
lead that to kind of cause some issues. You have that relationship between Barry and Cousinelle. You look good. So do you. Reach this point in time where it's it's most complex, where Barry's done something terrible in the past and Cousinelle's starting to learn about it, knowing what happened there. and But their lives are still intertwined and there's this sharp tension between the two of them where they have to continue to interact in that regard. There's some very cool action sequences, in particular, the, the chase sequence in the middle of the season. Very cool. Some like stuff where you're like, how did you even shoot that? Like, what was going on in this shot that you're able to pull all, pull that off? Uh, that was memorable, iconic, the, one of the best action sequences in the entire show. And I, I, I debated back and forth, like, which is this one on top? Is two on top? But I think definitely I, I would put two on top. And I think some of that is because of how they've matured it, you start to lose a little bit of some of my favorite stuff about this show because that relationship with Barry Cousinelle is broken, that there's a little bit of something is lost in that. A little bit of something is lost because of that. Because of where Sally is at with, with kind of her career and the success that she's had, and then it, it you know, she's in this place where she's separate from everybody else and kind of are doing her own thing. You lose a little bit of something there uh, because Barry is so messed up and treating her awful. Some of the spark and the fun is kind of lost as you see the toxicity start to creep in. And then by season three, the back in the, the fourth with Fuchs of are we, aren't we not, or do we hate him? Do we know who's trying to kill who the back and forth? Starting to strain by the time you get to season three, but a ton of great stuff in here, a bunch of very cool things. Um, and like I said, I appreciate that choices have consequences. And so Sally, by lying at the end of season two, has great success because of it, but also it also has a toxicity in reality to where she's not nearly as healthy as she thinks she is. She hasn't moved on the way that she thinks she has. She just has success and success doesn't heal you. And she wants to be presented as this, this, this feminist voice because of this, all of the things she's trying to do while at the same time having all these flaws that she always had. And so it plays that out. And Barry is descending uh, just cr like falling apart on the inside because of everything that's come before, desperately trying to win back his mentor when there's it's there's no hope of bringing him back. So there's a lot of those things that that I that I enjoyed about this season. While also just lost a little bit of the the fun, the charm that was in season two. But coming in in first place for me is going to be season two, and this is where I felt. Where for what I like in shows like this, this was kind of the peak for me. Where you've established everything, the characters are all in place, and their relationships are maturing and getting more complicated. But we haven't gone over the hill of conflict yet, where things start to spiral out of control. This is We're still on the rise. I have a little bit more fun with the rise than the fall. In particular with this show, it it, it was never going to have a happy ending. It was always going to end bad and with terrible things happening. But there's some fun in watching the dream as some of it starts to feel like it's all coming together in a positive way. Do you think I'm a bad person, Mr. Kusno? I think you are deeply human. And so just even uh, the exploration of Sally, someone I really didn't like during season one, when you start to learn about her backstory, the abuse. That's what led her to flee to LA to try and create this new life where she's literally trying to act like a different person as an actor. And with the, the you know, trying to, the assignment to do these skits about their real life stories where she's having to actually process through all of that. And ultimately when you get to the end of the season, she chooses to tell the comforting lie the lie that she wishes was true that presents her the way she wants to be perceived 
and she's rewarded for it. She's rewarded for her flaws and gets everything she's wanted by lying. Something very compelling about that, very interesting about that. And all at the same time, you're kind of watching this back and forth with Barry and Fuchs and their rivalry with one another. Each of right, Barry tr- thinks he's having this success in his acting world and getting these auditions and everything. It seems like maybe this is coming together, but all of his past, long history with Fuchs, rejecting Fuchs, the choices, what he did with the with Janice, like all of these choices are also coming back to haunt him and they have horrible consequences and you can't, you can't just leave your past behind. There's like a lot of really profound stuff in it. It's told in this fantastical scenario. That's not in any way believable or realistic, but it's interesting and it, it could function in a lot of ways as the, the characters, the, all the, whether the professions, are metaphors for the themes being explored in a very clever, interesting, witty way. Um, and I think it was best at this season where you, you're starting to see the rise, but the choices that they make because of their flaws that continue that set them up for the destruction that you see in the later seasons. Also another episode uh, uh, season has another great action based episode where Barry gets in the fight with the guy and that keeps going on and on and on. You keep thinking it's over, it keeps on going. And uh, that guy is like a pretty famous stuntman and done some acting, but he's part of the John Wick crew. He's actually the guy that trained Bob Odenkirk for the movie Nobody. And so seeing him show up in that particular role was quite a bit of fun. But for me, this is the season where kind of everything was in full swing. All the different plot lines for each of the characters was interesting. It was tight enough that it didn't feel like we were in too many different places and you're feeling the rise while always knowing knowing this thing's going to come crumbling down. So for me, season two comes in at number one.